All right, so here I am at the Tesla service center in Stockport, day two of running in Model S. Um, now, I actually came to pick up my Model 3 from the service center because I was expecting the work to have been done, which to be fair to Tesla, it was done, but it wasn't done to the right standard. I might make another video on that, but really long story short was when I picked up my Model 3 brand new, it had swirl marks in it, it had uh, hologramming, it had micromarine, there was a bunch of paintwork issues, so Tesla were fixing that for me and it wasn't acceptable in the standard that it was, so I'm getting them to completely work properly. In the meantime, I just thought to follow up because I'm going to have the Model S for a little bit longer now. I've been driving it around today again, obviously on the way here, and thought I'd share a few more thoughts on how I'm finding it so far. There it is connected to the supercharger. One thing to point out, it's so much slower to charge than the Model 3. Maybe it's to do with its age, the, the kind of different battery technology, etc, etc. But let's step in the car and I'll tell you a few more things that I've noticed since I've had the car. Maybe a bit quieter. I think having driven it around a little bit longer now I am starting to enjoy the Model S definitely I, I did still really like it yesterday as well however I find myself missing the Model 3 more and more for me the, the kind of the crux of it comes down to I really wish that they had brought the best of both of these cars together now look I totally understand not really comparing apples with apples there's a difference in age there's a difference in target market and there's a difference, a significant difference in what these two cars cost. But if they could bring out another model that has the heads down display of the Model S, but all of the other elements of the Model 3, I think that would be an unbeatable car. A couple of other small things that I noticed with the Model S as I've been driving around in it. Uh, one was that, and I'll flip the camera around in a second, the, the the Model 3 has blind spot cameras, the Model S doesn't. I don't know if that would be a big deal for you. For me, I've always done without blind spot cameras, but now I've got them in the Model 3. I'm just used to them. I really like them. And so it just, again, it feels like something's missing. What I like on both the cars is with the front and rear parking sensors, it tells you the actual distance, how far you are away from something. And it'll like show you it in inches or whatever. That is a little bit more sensitive on the Model 3. I find with the Model S, the parking sensors will give you the, the kind of the amber and red alert, but it wasn't it won't give you the numbers distance until you are really, really close to something. Again, just the Model 3 slight tweak there takes it um for me, prefer that. Also I find in terms of overall noise and comfort the newer age and the suspension setup of the Model 3 is a little bit more to my liking. I'm not going to say it's better, better is quite subjective. I think this car, this Model S, has the air suspension. I had a quick peek in the wheel arches earlier and I could see there were some electrical connectors going to and from the suspension setup. Might be wrong there. I, I don't know the Model S suspension setup inside out. But yeah, just a couple of pointers for people, and that's how I feel about the Model S on day two. I think just being sat in this car now for over an hour, waiting for it to charge, mulling over everything I've been through, I'm still loving the Model 3 even more, and I just can't wait to get back behind the wheel.